In the ever-shifting landscape of geopolitics, few issues have proven as contentious and consequential as the role of oil in shaping the balance of power between nations. At the heart of this discourse lies the long-standing debate over the potential for OPEC nations to weaponize oil prices, leveraging their control over global supply to exert economic and political pressure on the United States and other major consumers. As the world grapples with the resurgence of great power rivalries, the specter of oil weaponization has once again taken center stage, with policymakers, analysts, and scholars offering a diverse array of perspectives on the motivations, mechanisms, and potential consequences of such a strategy. For many observers, the 1973 Arab oil embargo serves as a stark reminder of the potential for oil to be wielded as a potent geopolitical weapon. In the wake of the Yom Kippur War, a coalition of Arab nations led by Saudi Arabia and the Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries, OAPEC, imposed an embargo on oil exports to the United States and several other Western nations that had supported Israel in the conflict. The impact of this embargo was swift and severe, with oil prices quadrupling almost overnight and triggering a global economic crisis. As Daniel Jurgen, the renowned energy historian, notes in his seminal work, The Prize, the embargo marked a profound transformation of world politics and economics a redistribution of power and wealth. This historical precedent has shaped the perspectives of many analysts who view the potential for oil weaponization as a clear and present danger. In a recent analysis by the Baker Institute for Public Policy, the authors warn that Russia's 2022 invasion of Ukraine reprised the risks of energy weaponization, drawing parallels between the current geopolitical tensions and the events of 1973. At the heart of the debate over oil weaponization lies the question of OPEC's leverage and the United States' ability to respond to such a strategy. Proponents of the oil weaponization narrative argue that OPEC's control over a significant portion of global oil supply gives it the power to manipulate prices and inflict economic harm on the United States and its allies. This perspective is echoed by analysts at Clearview Energy Partners, who suggest that the Biden administration's recent warning of potential retaliation against OPEC for cutting production goes well past disappointment and could signal a willingness to support legislation targeting the cartel's market power. However, others argue that the United States' emergence as a major oil producer and exporter, driven by the shale revolution, has diminished OPEC's leverage and reduced the potential impact of any attempt at oil weaponization. As the Baker Institute analysis notes, the shale revolution turned the United States into the world's largest producer and a net exporter of oil, capping a 50-year quest. Beyond the economic calculations, many analysts point to the broader geopolitical dynamics at play, particularly the shifting alliances in the role of Russia within the OPEC Plus framework. The recent decision by OPEC Plus to cut oil production, despite objections from the United States, has been viewed by some as a victory for Russia and a sign of its growing influence within the cartel. Amidst the chorus of concerns and dire warnings, there are also voices of caution and restraint, urging both sides to exercise prudence and pursue diplomatic solutions to diffuse tensions. Similarly, some analysts argue that the rhetoric surrounding a potential U.S.-North Korea conflict often overlooks the shared interests in mutual deterrence that have historically prevented direct military confrontation between nuclear-armed powers. As the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace notes, the majority of those who support the special operation explain their position in terms of protecting the Russian-speaking population in Ukraine. This perspective suggests that both sides may be more inclined to pursue diplomatic solutions and avoid escalation, even in the face of heightened tensions. As the debate over the potential for a U.S.-North Korea nuclear conflict rages on, it is clear that the path forward will require a delicate balance of diplomacy, deterrence, and risk mitigation strategies. On the diplomatic front, many experts emphasize the need for sustained dialogue and confidence-building measures to reduce the risk of miscalculation and escalation. This could involve establishing clear lines of communication, setting mutually agreed-upon rules of engagement, and exploring avenues for cooperation on issues of shared concern such as climate change and global health. 
At the same time, maintaining a credible deterrent and robust defensive capabilities is seen as essential to dissuading aggression and preserving the delicate balance of power. This may involve continued investment in advanced military technologies, strengthening alliances and security partnerships, and developing comprehensive contingency plans for potential conflict scenarios. Perhaps most crucially, there is a growing recognition of the need to mitigate the risks associated with a potential nuclear exchange. This could involve measures such as hardening critical infrastructure against electromagnetic pulse, EMP, attacks, developing robust emergency response and recovery plans, and exploring arms control agreements to limit the proliferation of nuclear weapons and delivery systems. As the world grapples with the looming specter of a potential U.S.-North Korea nuclear conflict, it is clear that the stakes have never been higher. The narratives and perspectives surrounding this existential threat are as diverse as they are consequential, reflecting the complex web of strategic interests, ideological differences, and great power dynamics that underpin this pivotal geopolitical relationship.